Hi, salam alaikum. Hi, salam alaikum. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Love My Kidneys, family. All praises are due to Allah. You know that over here it takes a whole lot of love. It takes a whole lot of love to love your kidneys, to love yourself. It takes a whole lot of love, and we're here to remind you of the love that it takes. Right. So all praises is due to Allah. We are honored that, that each and every one of you is here with us today. You could have been anywhere and everywhere, but you decided to give us a little bit of time in your divine mind. And we really, truly appreciate that. We thank you so, so much for allowing us to be a part of your day and we pray that we will be able to share some things with you that will help you along your life's journey. All yeah. praises are due to Allah. Well, we want to first start off. Wa alaikum salam, Sister Fatima. We want to first start off with letting you all know that due to uh, unforeseen circumstances, our dear brother, Brother Student Minister Desmond Muhammad won't be able to be with us today, but that's all right because we've all a new date for him to be able to come on. It'll be a new date for him to be able to come on, but as you already know, we have been dealing with this for quite some time, and we are well qualified to let you know what we do to help you all to get the best out of your dialysis. Not that you're gonna stay on it forever, but just so that you can get the best out of it as possible. That's what we're here to talk about, that you're getting the best of your dialysis and what it should do for you, okay? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. My beautiful wife, my queen, my friend, she's gonna be leading us in that conversation. But you already know that we got a couple of products first before we get engaged in that, and then I turn it over to her. And you know we gotta have a little theme music. So you already <laughs> know how we do. That's right. All right, so the product of the week, product of the week, is how to eat to live how to eat to live book one how to eat to live book two how to eat to live book one how to eat to live book two you can pick that up on our website on etsy.com or of course you can pick it up at the final call store but we do offer it as well we just wanted to let you all know that that we do offer it as well and of course if you're looking for that pax immune we are proud distributors of the pax immune and many other products as well so we really 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 appreciate yes 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 we were looking forward to it too sister Fonson, yeah. but when we spoke with him he was in the heat of things and he just, just let things us go in the dialysis yes. center Yes, you and know, he said he it, wouldn't be able to make it. It just so. happened, so we do apologize. We don't, for he, that. He's going to be. He's excited, though, if I could say, um, he is really excited about being on the show. Yeah, he has so much information that he wants to share. Yeah. with us. Um, but um, unforeseen circumstances, which is when you're in the dialysis center, anything can happen. Family, you know, one one time we actually cold out. So, you know, it's it's a um you know, it's a lot that goes on in there. It's one of the reasons we decided to do it at home. So he is an administrator over the dialysis center, so he has to be on hand, you know. So we're gonna work it out though that um he's gonna be on the show real soon. Okay. Inshallah next Thursday. Yes, yes, yes. I love me some brother student minister Desmond Muhammad. Uh when our brother's gonna build the study group in the west end he uh he asked us we lived all the way in stone mountain at the time so um you know it was a little difficult to get back and forth especially after we lost our car but anyway i digress so you already know that you got we want you to support the baddest boldest coldest newspaper on the planet earth and that is the final call newspaper. If you are not a subscriber to the digital and the physical copy of the final call, 
we ask that you would become a subscriber uh, especially to the digital where you can have it on your phones your tablets your computers wherever you access digitally it'll be there for you and if you need the physical copy like my beloved wife i like my physical copy too but i do find that with the digital copy they're able to do more things i seen a youtube video in there you can highlight the article you can share the articles you can um even play the final call and it will read to you oh wow so now that I didn't know. yes yes okay. that's right you, you can often. even you can even play the final call newspaper oh, wow. and it will read to you oh, that's a plus. so so that means we already hooked it in for those who may not be able to see you can press play and, it's really and then yeah it's inexpensive it's five dollars for the month 4.99 five dollars for the month you can do a six month three month or a year subscription we definitely recommend uh we definitely recommend that you all become subscribers to the final call especially in an hour like this where we're dealing with bought and paid for control yeah. media news that we can use we need trustworthy news we need people that's unbought uncompromised unpaid for and the final call represents that that's why i am a proud carrier card carrying member of the nation of islam under the leadership of the honorable minister louis farcon and of course a proud distributor of the final call i just like i've been thinking about this and the last couple of times i mentioned it but i want you to get to this newspaper on the bottom page of every edition as you can see where the trumpet is i'm gonna try to bring it so you can see it right it says a message dedicated to the resurrection of the black man and woman of america and the world that is this newspaper is dedicated to our resurrection and i will rise all i did was read the back page of the final call point number one through 12 and what the muslims want and what they believe and it sent me on my journey it sent me on my journey to transform my life so all praises due to allah for that and we're going to give those of us who are listeners in you know uh a preview of next week we're going to cover that we're going to cover that right there that's one of the shows for next week we're going to cover that it's where you live killing you mm. we need to know that so if you didn't get that issue we're going to talk about it we're going to read that we're going to read it and then we engage in it okay yes, so that's going to be a very powerful show and we want you to tune in but anyway um we're gonna get ready to give you a little theme music this is fresh out of the box i mean i literally just made this so you I all like <laughs> mine from creations we didn't go out until probably like what 9 45 <laughs> and he just finished it like one minute before the show so in 30 minutes this is what my wonderful husband was able to produce so let's take a listen all right so i hope you all enjoy it Thank you. 
y'all think about that? What y'all think about that? I thought that was so befitting because we're dealing with love by kidneys. Right. So therefore, I named love. it. This is the love. This is that kind of love we talking about. That song to me, it make you feel good, invigorated, yeah. excited ready to hear it again and again and again. It, it, it right. makes you want to get up and dance and move. And that is how it should be when you're dealing with the most sacred gift that you have, and that is yourself. That is I'm going to say that again. When you're dealing with the most sacred gift that you have, which is you, That's right. you are the gift that keep on giving. Mm. Allah keep giving to you, and if you use your life right, then you can keep on giving to us. Mm. So all praises is due to Allah for that. I'm glad you all enjoyed it, Sister Charlene, Sister Fatima. I am glad you all enjoyed that music. So now I get to do my favorite thing that I love to do, and God willing, I get to do it on the next show too. We're going to give you a little sneak preview already. Uh, the next show, The Queen of Rap, is going to be dealing with stones, stones and crystals to help us during Ramadan. Oh, you didn't hear me. Stones and crystals to help us during Ramadan, to help us be more focused, to help us be more invigorated, to help us be more empowered to push through in Ramadan. So you don't want to miss that. So now, once again, I get the opportunity to bring on my wife, my friend, my companion, my in the faith, the woman of goodness. I am so glad that Allah blessed me to make that choice. I mean, I would take this woman anywhere from the hip hop concert to the most elegant place in the whole wide world because she is that kind of woman. You know what I mean? She is a versatile woman. Allah so all Allah. praises is due to Allah. <laughs> for that, you know, so I turn it over to my beloved wife, your sister, my sister, Natalie Muhammad, a.k.a. Sister Nafiza Ali. I won't say the queen of rap yet, yeah. but y'all already know. <laughs> so here she is. I said, I'm like, uh, peace and blessings. What an awesome, awesome thinking Thursday, guys. We made it to another one. A lot is so merciful. He is so kind, no matter what happened in this last week, from last Thursday to this Thursday, you know, we made it, you know, and we have an opportunity because he woke us up another day. We have an opportunity to make it better. You know, we are the designers of our future. So whatever we see for ourselves, I was talking to one of my beautiful sisters who was on this line today, and we were talking how I'm living my best life, right? How, why am I living my best life? Because I designed it. And if, it's, if I'm not living my best life, then I got to design it. I got to change things so that I can live my best life. This is your time. Allah came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad so that you can live your best life. Yes. So we're going to live our best life no matter what challenges that come our way, right? right? You know, we have challenges. That's called life. Getting here was a challenge. Totally. You know, we had to outrun, outswim, you know, millions of others. You know, but we made it and we are here and we continue to breathe and grow. So all praise is due to Allah. Welcome family to another Thinking Thursday. Yes, our brother could not be here. Uh, we just talked to him uh, right after the last show, sending him the link. And so we can go ahead and get started. And he's like, drop the bomb. We, I can't I can do it, but it, maybe five minutes, 10 minutes. I'm like, no, let's not, you know, rush through it. You know, because it's, it's questions that I know you all have, um, you know, when you're and this is even though it's for people who are on dialysis, it's just dealing in a hospital environment. You know, when you're dealing with so much, no matter um, how well we take care of ourselves, even as vegetarians and vegans and, you know, things happen. Hey, you may cut your finger and have to go to the hospital. So anytime you're dealing with the medical profession, the more insight that you have you know, you're going to already be better, right? So, of course, here on Love My Kidneys, we talk about our kidneys, right? So make sure that we're going to take a moment. Yes. And we got to tell our kidneys what? We love them. I Come love on your now. kidneys. 
I love you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for working so hard for me. Thank you for cleansing my body, cleansing the toxins out of my body. Yeah. Thank you. Massage them. Massage them. Love them. Love them. You know, <laughs> wake them up. They say tap too. You could tap them. Right. There you go. Um, so definitely let's wake the kidneys up and get, make sure you're taking care of your kidneys. You're loving your kidneys. You know, make sure you're drinking enough water. Um, you know, if you're having any issues with your kidneys, even if not, you want your cranberry, um, you want your dandelion root, you know, there are certain things that help to cleanse the kidneys, um, uh, natural diuretics, um, such as your cucumbers, things like that. So what we're going to talk about today, since the brother was not able to, um, be present, we're going to talk about Ramadan and when we're dealing with our, um, our, our, I don't even like to say challenges anymore. When we're in the process of bringing the body back into balance, healing from, okay. Um, yes. And we, we can, we, we can say healing because God does that. You know, our enemy doesn't like that. He doesn't like those words, but the truth of the matter is that's what God does. He's a healer. You know, he is, that's what the Quran is also called the healer. Right. So mm -hmm. that's what God does. So we're not going to stray away from that language. Um, we will use other language like bringing the body back into balance. Um, however, we're we're um, we're OK when it comes to healing the body, you know, because the body can heal itself. And we have to believe that we have to have the faith in almighty God, Allah, that he is capable. He is able. I have heard the story. This man told us out of nowhere. We were at the library. And I, I mean, it couldn't have been no more than an elevator ride. Right. <laughs> he, right. he told us that he was in the military and, you know, he ended up with some type of brain cancer. Right. And when he was going to the doctor and all of that, and he prayed about it and, you know, he strengthened himself and his faith. And he said the next time he went to the doctor, they told him he didn't have brain cancer anymore. Right. You know, so I know that Allah is a healer. That some man random, I promise you, we've never seen that man before and haven't seen him since. And he just shared that information, you know, with us going from the waiting on the elevator upstairs to go to the room downstairs where we were having a, an event. So God is so awesome. You know, so many countless examples. And so when we put our effort, we put our faith, we put our actions into play, then God will heal your body. That's right. He will heal your mind. He will heal your spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're heartbroken and you're going through, you know, extreme um, challenges, you know, sometimes we can't find people in our environment that know how to love us the way that we want to be loved, you know, and that can be hard. And even though we're experiencing that, God heals. And he is able to heal the heart, right? So everything that we're experiencing, our spirit, if your spirit is broken, you lost somebody, you know, and, and you're not sure how to deal with that, go to the God and Ramadan family. And that's what we want to talk about. And I want you all to share it to y'all. No, I can't see, but my husband to read. Sister Tahia. All right. Tahia. Peace, queen. Sister Fatima. That's my sister, queen. Sister Charlene. My other sister, queen. Uh, I don't know who you got over there. All right. This is my sister over here. Any brothers that have tuned in as well? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so we want to talk about Ramadan. And how many of you all have experienced Ramadan before? Is there anybody here that this is going to be your first year or you haven't thought about doing it yet? Let me know um, so we can have this conversation. By Allah's grace, I've done it um, for most of 30 years in the nation of Islam. Yeah. And every year it is an amazing experience. Um, some years are a little bit more difficult than, uh, than others, especially when it's in the summer months, like July. Yeah. <laughs> July, Macon, Georgia. Ooh, <laughs> you know, um, those are pretty difficult. Um, Still a burn then, and it's starting to heat up here in Arizona. And the good thing for me, though, that I think uh, a lot of um, people on dialysis have an advantage, we can only 
supposed to only drink 32 ounces of water a day anyway. So it's not like we're always guzzling down and then we have to adjust. Um, so since we're limited on the amount of fluids that we take in, you know, because the if your kidneys are not, um, you know, releasing, then, you know, it can hold on and then you get the, the uh, fluid gains and, you know, that can cause problems in the body. So anyway, we're used to not drinking a lot of fluids anyway. So it's easier to do that. Now, of course, you have to be careful when you're dealing with any kind of um, dis-ease in the body, right? right? Because you want to make sure you're balanced. That means you're going to have to get up in the morning before prayer mm -hmm. and really prepare yourself for the day. If right. you're someone that has to eat two meals, you can still participate in Ramadan. You just need to get up before the sun rises, right. prepare yourself something, drink your water, drink your, your tea, you know, whatever it is that you're going to have in the, that early, early morning, right? And then as the sun is coming up or whatever, you want to do your, um, you know, after prayer, you want to do your Quranic reading and begin your day on that positive note, meaning you're already satisfied. You know, you've gotten your nutrients that you need, which I know for me, I got to get up and take my, um, my, my dietary supplements um, in the morning because I usually take it around 9, 10 o'clock. So I'm going to have to do it earlier, right? So it's mental preparedness. You have to mentally prepare yourself to go through this process of Ramadan. And we're going to talk about going through it. And then we're going to talk about some benefits um, of, of Ramadan. So many, but we're going to talk about that. Um, so if you get up early in the morning, right? And for one of my sisters, you know, I don't really like to call names because I don't want to tell you business, but one of, one of my sisters, she works at night. So, you know, she may have to take with her to work whatever she's going to need in the morning as far as her drinking so that when, you know, she gets home, only thing she needs to do is get some rest. I'm talking to you, <laughs> but get yourself, you know, some rest. And then, you know, as you get up in the evening and prepare yourself to go back to work or, you know, to, you want to really kind of try to prepare your meal so that at sunset or dusk sunset. sunrise i mean sun sunset yes. sunset when it's time to eat you want your food to be ready and the reason i say that is because if your meal is not ready then guess what you're gonna snack you're gonna snack and you know and and then it can end up into a whole night of eating you know <laughs> <laughs> trust me I, i've been there done that unfortunately um so you want to prepare your meal. Some people believe in preparing the, the meals for the week, you know, so on, on Sunday, they just go ahead and cook everything, stick it in the freezer. And then that way, all they got is put out. Um, no, but it depends on the circumstances for you. Um, but you want to be ready to eat and drink when the sun sets so that you can have a good meal and then you're done. And then, you you know, so it's doable family, even with your medication, you know, if you need to take it in the morning with something to eat, get on up and then, you know, take it at night after the sun has set. And that way you're able to go ahead and go through the whole day without eating. The more that we practice this type of, um, this, this type of process, then of course the healthier your body's going to be you know we know that the less you use your stomach the longer you're going to have it and if you were fortunate enough to hear brother nuri when he wrote uh went down the of our ancestors and how long they lived mm -hmm. you know living 940 years 860 years i mean wow right, right. you know so we right. should it should be easy to get to 100 we should not be breaking down you know, I mean, I know we live in a society that is breaking us down, right. you know, with the mental and the, 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 the food or the non-food, you know, which right. the most honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that right. one day there would be no good food on, on the market to eat. So, right. you know, that's one of the reasons my beloved sister, Sister Fatima is uh, showing me how to grow some stuff, you know, with a little bit of sunshine, a little bit of love mm -hmm. and a little bit of wow, well, we can actually grow something to eat, you know, even if it's just one thing, if all you do 
do is green peppers or um, okra, you know, string beans, and you're going to eat string beans. Or maybe you could trade your string beans for somebody else's onions. You know, let's um, do what we can, whether you're living in an apartment or you have a backyard. You know, we have to be able to feed ourselves something, you know, for our survival. But as we do this family, what we're doing is preparing ourselves for the um, the famine that is coming. People that are eating three meals a day, they have no discipline. It's going to be hard. It's going to be really, really difficult for them to survive the times that are coming in front of us. You know, so Ramadan is a blessing. You know, we talk about that reset button, right? When when Ramadan is that time for us to go within and become disciplined and, you know, not eat, not drink, you know, not have relations with our husband or our, your wife during that morning times, right? right. So you got to be creative. You know, it's only so many hours in the night. <laughs> 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 you know, so you got to time things right. So that, you know, you don't feel like you have totally, you know, can't do anything for the whole month, you know. Um, and if you want to eat something special, you know, just prepare it, you know, absolutely prepare that for yourself. So did anybody have any comments, honey? My beloved sister say, all oh, praise is due to Allah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, sister Charlene says, of course, this is going to be her first year in Arizona mm -hmm. during Ramadan. Okay, yes. So this is, you know, this is something that is unique to her. Mm. Uh, I, I highly recommend. I, I'm I'm dropping the link in on different sites, y'all. So I'm not not paying attention. I highly recommend um, coconut water uh, during this time. I highly recommend it because it is it is very very hydrating. Mm. It's very, very hydrating. I'm not telling you don't drink regular water, but I'm saying, uh, you know, the coconut water is very hydrating um, to the body. Of course, as a dialysis patient, you have to be very careful because it does have quite an amount of potassium. So I'm not telling you What's that. What's the potassium or phosphorus? I believe it's potassium. Okay. I believe it my is. son pointed it out to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or well, hold on, well, it may be possible. I we'll find out as okay. the show goes on. Uh, but in that, I highly recommend that that you drink you some coconut water uh, during the time. Um, you know, because a lot of times, just drinking your water, I'm not telling you that water won't do it. The uh, the coconut water, you know is the natural Gatorade. It is yeah, the right. natural uh, version of Gatorade. It gives those um, things that your body needs to help you to stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. Okay, so think about uh, the islands. Coconuts grow everywhere pretty much in the islands. Coconuts grow everywhere pretty much uh, in the islands, okay? Um, and where it's hot in, in, in hot climates, you find coconut trees. Right. So this is, and the beauty of it is man's hands never touch the coconut water because it grows. In, so, so when you crack it open for the first time, that is the first time that it has been opened. That's right. I'm like, I'm the real how are you? Peace. Grand rising to you. Thank you for tuning in with us. Um, you know, I just want to say this and I'm going to turn it back over to her. Uh, you know, the Holy Quran once again says that fasting is a prescription. Fasting mm -hmm. is a prescription. Yes. Okay. It is a prescription for us. Many of us deal and struggle with a bunch of things. Some of us, we, we eat too much. We smoke too much. We drink too much. We do these things. But fasting allows us to know and understand that if we can resist food, water, we can resist, which is that which sustains the body, then we can most definitely resist anything else that that comes our way right we can definitely okay okay sister fatima says lemon water apple cider vinegar mm. fermented foods 
alkaline is very important. Yes. Okay. All praises are due to Allah. So we would like to hear, you know, as my wife continues to talk on, we want to hear some things that you all do to prepare yourself for Ramadan. Like last year, uh, we actually ordered decorations. We ordered decorations to put on the walls and everything. We ordered brand new prayer beads. We ordered brand new prayer beads and even new prayer rugs uh, last year as well. Mm. You know, so um, what do you all do to get yourself ready uh, for Ramadan? Even though we know that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad pointed to us in uh, How to Eat to Live that uh, Ramadan is not really uh, a fast as such. It is fasting, a form of it. But true fasting is when you don't eat food at all. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's when you don't eat food at all. That's right. that's fasting. But this is a form of fasting, no water, no food, to sundown. But we as Muslims in the nation of Islam, we know that we're taught to fast three days out of the month and eat one meal a day anyway. So essentially, some uh, other Muslims say you all do Ramadan all year. <laughs> <laughs> but it says the yes, that is what we do. Right. You know, we do it like that. So I'm going to turn it back over to her. We'd yeah. love to hear some of you all's uh, thoughts, some of you all's um, about this. What do you all do mm-hmm. to get yourself mentally and spiritually prepared for Ramadan? You know, and that is so important to prepare yourself. We were listening um, on Mind Spark Creations this morning to Brother Imam Sultan, and he was saying that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that he would actually fast. You wow. know, his family thought he was going to go a whole month of fasting, you know, because he was in preparation of Ramadan. Ramadan is really important. You know, it's not just, oh, I can't eat. You know, it is so much deeper. You know, and it can be so much deeper than that because it's that spiritual connection to yourself and to the God, you know, tethering yourself to the God, you know, putting that extra knot in, you know, to make sure that your connection is strong and that your foundation is strong and nothing can break that. So Ramadan is that time that we're able to focus on it. So I remember the minister saying when he was over in the Middle East during Ramadan and he said it was so hot. (laughs) You know, and and he just he he couldn't wait for prayer so he could put some water in his mouth, <laughs> you know, to to rinse his mouth out, you know, because we do ablution, right? <laughs> and he was just saying, you know, he just wanted to do that, but he didn't want to swallow not one drop, you know, of that water because he's showing Allah his dedication, showing Allah his love for him, you know. And so we want to do that. We want to show Allah how much we love him, how much we appreciate him. And because we can't really give him gifts, right? You know, somebody can give me some diamond earrings and oh Lord knows I would love them, right? But we can't give God gifts like that because he owns everything. There you go. You know, so what can we do? We can show him our love through our sacrifice. You know, we've seen movies before where they sacrifice people. And, you know, I think they had a different perspective on things. That's not what I personally don't believe. That's what Allah wants from us. But I do know that he wants us to sacrifice ourselves in such a way that we give our life back to him. He gives us life. We give it back to him through serving him, through serving his people, right? Serving humanity, you know, and that's one of the ways that we can show him our love. So the Holy Quran talks about feeding the homeless, you know, and for me and my husband, that's a really important part of our marriage, you know, of our life together is feeding the homeless, you know, or feeding those that are disadvantaged, you know, because you don't have to be without a home, you know, or without a car. We're we're not checking your pockets. If you come and you hungry, you eat, you know, and that's just how simple that that is. But during the month of Ramadan, it allows you when your your stomach is turning, you know, because you hungry, you know, you got that thirst, you know, it's like a, a, a some sand in the back Around you like, oh Lord, let me just gather up enough saliva to swallow and you know coat my my throat. Imagine the homeless, 
you know, and what they go through when they can't find any clean drinking water. Nobody's giving them a bottle of Avion or uh, Fiji or Fuji. What is it? Fiji. Fiji, you know, which is actually a very clean water. But anyway, what they don't have that, you know, they go through days when nobody bring them food, you know, or they have to eat out of a garbage can. You know, you have to, when you think about what others are experienced that don't have, or a mother who can't feed her children and the babies are hungry. Right. You know, when we think about those things during Ramadan, then it, it blesses our heart to be able to give more, to be able to do more. You know, thinking about the the um, the dryness in the mind when we don't have wisdom, when we don't have, you know, the the words of God to pull on, right? So if we go in the street and we tell somebody, you know, God loves you. You know, you are special. You are unique. You are the originator of the planet Earth. You know, Brother Nuri, you know, he talks about how he would go out and talk with the homeless and tell them, hey, God, you are God. Right. You know, for one, it's going to blow somebody's mind. Man, I'm in the dirt. You know, what do you mean? And things like that open up their hearts and their minds. And then you, you all know, when you start coming into a knowledge and love of yourself, how good you feel, right? You know, and so if you've ever been down, if you've ever been depressed, you know, or feel like nobody loves you and you, you know, just out here, just a kind word. You know, I was thinking the other day, actually today, um, some things that we can do, because my husband had mentioned during the month of Ramadan. And so I said, I, I'm going to go and get maybe $25 worth of fives, right? So uh, $5, I'm going to bless five people. So they don't have to be homeless, you know, but it's going to be five people that I'm going to bless. And hey, buy yourself some coffee, buy yourself, you know, put it up, save it, put it on your savings day gift. I, I'm really, that's not my point. My point is I want to, I want to put a smile you know, on someone's face. I want them to feel good, right? Because my auntie told me that people won't remember things that you've done necessarily. They'll remember how you made them feel, right? I want you to feel God's spirit when you talk to me. I want you to feel that God loves you so much that he's using Sister Nafisa to share something with you. That is my intent. That's always my intent. So during Ramadan, it just makes me um, focus even more. And the more that Allah gives me, the more that I want to share. You know, I, I really do. And I, I, you know, we're talking about food and, you know, all of that. But, but Ramadan and being able to. Ah, uh, she said bean pie makes her smile. Oh, okay. What's that? Sister Fatima. Oh, Sister Fatima. <laughs> You shake in. My <laughs> husband made a bean pie that was just so delicious and divine. Oh my goodness. It was really, really good. Um, actually, we still have one in the freezer. You might ask him to ship it because um <laughs> anyway, um, because we want to put a smile on your face. Yeah, you okay. Are. So we um, you know, as we go through Ramadan, yes, it's about us. You know, but ask yourself, most of us, especially as black people, you know, we get a thrill out of helping people. You know, that's why we're nurses. You know, that that's why we're doctors and teachers and, you know, we're paramedics and things like that, because we want to serve. We really do. You know, we just don't feel that sometimes it's reciprocated. Is that correct? That's right. And we don't feel like we're appreciated. So sometimes we put our barriers up, right? But my daddy said this to me. He said, it's good to give, but don't give until it hurts. Right. Okay. So, you know, we want to give and share, you know, what we can, when we can, but that makes you feel good. Right. You know, it makes you feel like you have enlightened someone else. You've helped somebody else. So, you know, Ramadan is the time, you know, for us to give and to share with one another and build that relationship with Allah. And when you're not eating, you really can focus more. Yeah. You know, if you've ever done a fast, like a three-day fast, you know, it just, your mind just is clearer. 
You know, you, you got less toxins in the body, right. right? You know, and the more that you cleanse your body, the more that you're putting pure food or the best that you can find in your body, then the, you're going to get even more out of it. You know, and I have to bear witness because like I told you all, I was in a fog for a year, you know, and so now that I have more clarity of mind, you know, I am so grateful to Allah. And I know it's because I've been able to get back on track too with the one meal a day. And of course, dialysis helped to cleanse a lot of the toxins that was going on in the body. But I'm more conscious of the amount that I put on in my meal, right? You know, so that I can remain clear in my thoughts, clear in my prayers, you know, and allowing Allah to continue to heal my body. And I have faith and I believe and I trust, you know, you know, Minister Ava, she said, trust and believe, <laughs> you know, trust and believe that the God is working on me, right. you know, and he's working on you if you're working on yourself, yeah. right? You know, Allah will be pleased with us. And when he's pleased with us, he'll bring us closer to him, right? You know, so let's do the good deeds. Let's really discipline ourselves and be strong in this month of Ramadan, you know, with all of our low desires, yeah. you know, and let's elevate and really focus on those top four chakras, right? It's, it's seven chakras. I know, but I'm saying the top ones, yeah. the, the not the low desires. Yeah. I mean, we can, you know, so control one, those. One, one, yes. two, throat, three, heart. Right. So that's what I would think. I'm I'm thinking, you know, focusing, you know, on that spirituality, you know, doing my meditation, um, which is really cool too during Ramadan and being quarantined, if you are in fact at home, um, you know, taking some time for the meditation of your heart and and for the night of power. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, I, I just get uh better than ten thousand months. And if you all ever calculated mm. that, it's like 83 years. Mm. No, it's or, a thousand months. A thousand months. But right. it's still, it was like 83 years. Right. It was a long like time. It was so, a long so time. So one night, one you know, night. one night of, of praying and doing your 19 rakahs and, mm -hmm. you know, reading the Holy Quran and reflecting on Almighty God, Allah, you know, as we, um, you know, go through the month of Ramadan, I look forward to the night of power. You know, the night of majesty, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, um, Allah said you can ask for anything yeah. on that night, you know, and, and there's some things that we need, this is you know, and some things that we want. And I believe no matter how long the journey, let me say this, no matter how long the journey, if you be steadfast, Allah will give us the victory. Yeah. He will give us the victory one way or another. You know, if nothing else, we set the standards for anybody to come behind us. You know, so be steadfast in what it is that you are doing. Um, one of our beautiful sisters, which you're going to see um, a couple of our sisters products that will be on um, the queen on Etsy, on Nafisa Ali, on Etsy. Um our sisters that are working some real beautiful magic. One of our sisters is the, um, okay, I'm not going to get it the, wrong. She's the queen of rap shows. That's not, she gave, she, <laughs> she has queen another name, but she loved to crochet. There you go. And every stitch is done with love and intentions. And her butterfly wrap is just amazing. It's, it flows. It's nice and beautiful. And even though in the, um, the summer months it's hot, it's still light enough for you to wear it. It's airy. You know, it will complement any garment that you choose to wear it with. And she will have her products on um, um, our Etsy page. And then we have our other sister, uh, and that's Sister Fatima that will be producing those right and sister charlene is um going to have some beautiful beautiful pictures on canvas that um allah blessed her to draw for ramadan you know so that we can and reflect and, and painting drawings and paintings um that so that we can look around our house and 
we've created our own Ramadan, you know, decorations and it's right. So every time you, you know, you're in the house and you're walking around, you're reminded that it's Ramadan and you're reminded that the reason you do what it is that you do. No, because that's just, I mean, it's beautiful, but she's not ready. Cards like this. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. This is a, a card a sister created for me, um, and it's very personable, you know. But we can, Sister Charlene and I, we're going to be working on some stuff so that we can produce cards like this for Ramadan. You know, we have to have our own hallmark. You know, we have to have um, a place, a party store. Uh, you know, where you can come and get your Ramadan and your Savior's Days, you know, and your Holy Day of Atonement, you know, where we could just go and, and have those things for ourselves. So like our culture, you know, and it, it's not just one family, you know, everybody will be able to get it um, because what we are creating is our new world. And, you know, I know that's one of the things I want to focus on during this month of Ramadan is really, you know, conditioning my mind to have um to be what and who Allah wants me to be in this new world um that is his kingdom. So anybody else have any comments or thoughts? Yes, Sister say? Fatima said that uh Allah's queenly raps, the okay. butterfly rap coming soon. Yes. Inshallah pushing for Mother's Day. Okay. So she she working on that. Okay. And you'll begin to see those beautiful pictures up. Uh, in the next couple of days, we're going to do a whole uh, advertisement for it. And we're going to do the same for Sister Fatima as well. She yeah. already been taking wonderful pictures. Okay, yes, sir, Brother Gavin. That's right. She gone, Reiki, healing yeah. arts can further assist yes. you. Absolutely, yes. that is right. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely, that is right. Um especially in a time like this mm. you know many of us we've heard of chi we've heard of chi gong and a lot of us you know we don't believe that and this that and the other but you know we know a good brother of ours uh brother tarif ghazi and this brother you know he's all about the chi gong yeah i mean and we got footage of this man taking bricks over the head, mm. wood in the head, and walk away just fine. <laughs> so, I mean, that's not something that's not real. We we know it's real, but mm. a lot of us, we haven't been taught the power of our own self. Qigong and Reiki and the healing arts reconnect us with the energetic side of our being, right. with the energetic side of our being. You yes. know, uh, my beloved wife, I don't know if you want me to share it, but I'm going to say, say it. Wait, just uh, tell she me had a, part. No. She <laughs> had a, a, a vision of Mother Tarnetta. She said she had a vision of Mother Tarnetta, and Mother Tarnetta released some white doves for her. And then she came and told her that she has a power she said that she has a power that haven't been seen in the world. She won't be the greatest with it, but she'll be the first one to have it. We don't know necessarily it yet, what it is, uh, but, you know, I time have faith. will reveal. I have faith, and that's time why, will reveal. you know, we, we have to keep moving forward. So, brother, do you actually do um, any of those arts? Because it is a beautiful... Um, uh, Brother Gavin, that happened a little bit after she passed, your journey. Oh, yeah. A little okay. bit after she passed, uh, Mother Tarnetta came. My mother, Mother Tarnetta has come to my wife for two or three times uh, since she uh, has passed. Yeah. Um, two or three times with different uh, things, messages for her. Now, why? I don't know, but you know, all praises due to Allah um, that she's receiving those um, visitations. You know, yeah. all praises due to Allah. We not spooky Allah. now. We just, you know, God can can send uh, images. We know that the mind never dies. The body does, but we know that the mind never dies. So this is why uh, in African culture we always accessing 
the uh, ancestral realm mm -hmm. and not like we're going to go and physically be with them, but the mind of the righteous never dies. Never so does. you can access that mind mm -hmm. at any time. Well, you know, and that's the beauty of, of meditation yeah. too. You know, you know, this is where Allah lives. Yes, he lives in our hearts and he's closer to us than our juggler vein. But Allah has control, you know, and this mind is massive. We only use 10%. Most of us, you know, probably less than that. But th this is brain has 100% capacity, right? You know, so there's many different things that we can do. And so in Ramadan or in meditation and prayer and, you know, whether you, it's Ramadan or any time, you know, when we communicate with the God and we're asking, because he's enhancing, I'm gonna, I got to sit up. Allah is enhancing our abilities. Yes. In this hour. Right. Because we need them right. in this hour. You know, when you're dealing with a wicked beast, you know, that's willing to go to the extent of killing people off the planet, you have to have gods. You have to have the mind of God Come in order. Provide through this process, Come on now. you know, so we can't be afraid of what it is that God Come is going to give now. us. We got to dig deep within ourselves to find what it is that he wants us to have. Right. And then he's put things on our planet to help us along the way. I heard that there were angels that actually work in Hollywood. Yeah. Well, why is that necessary? Mother said that. Why is that necessary? It's necessary because sometimes we don't get the mental picture. We need to see the physical picture. You know, and sometimes there are messages sent to us in these movies of abilities that exist. There are, are I'm gonna go there. We're just talking about Ramana. But we want to build ourselves up and not be afraid of our abilities. Brother, I wanted to go back to, and he's saying something I can't see, but I want to go back to what you were saying about. He said he's he been in denial for a long time. Yeah, don't do that to yourself. Yeah. Don't let nobody else tell you, you don't have this. You haven't seen that. You know, I'm saying don't, we don't want to go into the realm of the, um, we don't want to lose it, you know? So always keep your foundation with Allah, you know? And I think if you stay, you know, grounded with Allah who came in a person to master Farad Muhammad, then you will be fine. But you need to dig in, you know, and find out what it gave to you because he gave you something special that he gave to nobody else on the planet. Right. Right. So, you know, we have to embrace these things. What if Minister Farrakhan did not embrace who he is? What right. if he didn't embrace the gift that he could go and sit at the, the, the windowsill of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad? What if he didn't embrace himself right. to be able to read the minds and to travel all the way back to the brother's mother's womb? Yeah. You know, to find out what was his character, how was he Come built? You know, what if we didn't do that? What if he didn't do that? Yeah. You know, if he didn't believe in himself. Can, can I just jump in? Ooh, did look, it slow me down? Look, <laughs> let, let me just say this hmm. to, to everybody. Yeah. We are powerful beyond belief. Yes, sir. We are powerful beyond belief, but we have been joy but this is the power of the honorable elijah muhammad because it resurrects the original self and the original mind i i gotta tell a quick story just just a quick one just to show you what i mean about the power that we have and brother gavin you may have experienced something like we definitely want to talk more to you about this Chi Gong and, and what you're doing. So definitely hit us uh, and let it. We want to do that. All right. So my uncle, my uncle, he was somewhere. We didn't know where he was. This is a true story. So where he was, we didn't know what he was doing. Nobody could find him. We didn't uh, have, he didn't have his phone on. We didn't know where to find him. We didn't know if he was living or dead. Or they said they had got him. My dad said he had had a message from him, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, but it, it hadn't, we hadn't heard from him. So I, I told my dad, I said, well, I guess I'm going to have to call him. 
He said, how you going to call them and nobody got a phone number? I said, I'm not going to call them. I said, I'm not going to. Hold on. Sorry, y'all. They still there. I said, I'm not going to call him on the telephone. I'm going to call him with this. And my father laughed and my uncle laughed. And I said these words, I witness. I said to prove to you that it is real. I said, when I call him <clears throat> and he comes, he's going to sit right here in this chair i said and when he's in the chair he's gonna let you all know that he doesn't know why he came here that will be the first words that he uttered out of his mouth me and my son it's probably about three weeks to a month later we walk coming from the zoo we walk through the door Guess who's sitting there? My uncle's sitting there in the exact chair that I said he was going to sit in. And when we walked through the door, I said to him, I see that you finally got the mental text message. The first words out of his mouth was, I don't even know why I came here. My words was, you came here because I called you. Mm. Then I said, to my father and my uncle, I said, don't you remember when I told you that I was going to call him and he was going to come? They said, yes. I said, where did I tell you he was going to sit? They said, right there. I said, what did I tell you he was going to say? And they repeated it right back. What I said, this is the power that we have within us. Many of us have experienced things and are experiencing things that we know are not ordinary but extraordinary mm, right. but a lot of us run from it because it's not something that everybody does when we say that the black man and black people are the descendants of god himself yeah. this is exactly what we yeah, mean absolutely. meaning that you have internal the internal dna mm. of god yeah. himself yeah. and the power that that he has you have access to that power mm -hmm. if we live a upright life that's right i go and watch mm -hmm. the honorable minister lord farcon on this is the resurrection he said that the reason that we do not have more access to the power that we are god given is because we don't live a righteous life he said it right there and that sounds the mental power this is that's what right. he said that's right this he said what did brother what was that you said about angel and wow about that te telepathy yes yes mm -hmm. yes well, we have it. mother tinetta actually um has written many articles yeah you know about it and this is nothing you know, right. we, we just don't believe, you know, when they we used to have deja vu or as a child, you would have visions and be able to see things. But our, our family not knowing, girl, that ain't true. Boy, please. You know, but these are gifts that Allah has put in us. And this is our that we need to really tap in to that um, that source and those abilities that Allah gave to us and not be fearful. Right. I know I've spent so much of my, my life, you know, and we're, we're all got Job in us, right? right? You know, when the, all the stories in the Bible and the Holy Quran, we can relate on some level. Right. And in the story of Job of running from what it is that Allah That's, has, or uh, Job, Jonah. Jonah, thank you. Thank you, honey. Yeah. I got to have him okay. on my side. But running from the job and the work that Allah wants us to do. We are in an hour now, family, that we really have to help one another, right? These gifts are not just for us to have and say, oh, I can travel over here and I can travel. No, what, what are you traveling for? What is your point? What is your reasoning, right? right? You know, and see, and when we're based in Allah, 
you know, and we're doing things to please Allah. We're doing things to serve him. Then when I travel and give a message to someone is to help save them, is to help prepare them to be a better person. My son had an experience where a man told him that, you know, he talked to him for a few minutes and he said, well, if I have helped you or inspired you in any way, I have done my job. And then the man disappeared. Like this, literally, this no, we're is, not gonna go there. This just, is literal. He he really. This I mean, we, not, we look, just turn for a second. Look, no, no, no. If you gonna tell it, I'm gonna tell it. Okay. So we were at an event. I, to go all I know I that. To I know. I I am. <laughs> we were at an event. We were vending, and the men over there where they were giving free books out. They were giving out free books to everybody that was there. We didn't see the man. We didn't see the man say nothing to nobody. We were watching because our booth was right there a little bit away from where they were giving away the free books. Mm -hmm. My son walked over. He says, I'm going to go over and get me some books. He goes over there. Immediately when he walks over there, the man walks up to him. And my son is talking to him. I don't know how they got on this subject, but my son is telling him about the reality of God and that God is man and man is God. He says, you shouldn't. He said, yes, I should, because man is God and God is man. And he said, you have to be telling the truth because I see the light emanating from you you have to be telling the truth because i see the light emanating from you when you said that and then he turns to him and says if i have inspired you then i have done my job right. the man turns around <clears throat> i come over there i don't know what's being said so i come over that way we watch the man walking down the hallway I don't know if somebody called us or whatever. We turned just a few, not quick enough for somebody to get out of the door. The man was gone. We mm -hmm. didn't. We went to the restroom to see if he was even there. He wasn't there. We walked outside to see was the man there. He wasn't there. The man disappeared. He did. I'm you telling know. you. And so when we develop these kind of skills, brothers and sisters, you know, this is just my belief you know that and and reading scripture as well but when we develop these skills in this hour it is to be used for Allah's purpose to save us because we have to survive what is going on in our community the onslaught you know them you know really pressuring people to take this um experimental vaccine right you know, so we have to not only be strong in our faith, but we have to help strengthen others. We have to be able to warn others, you know, and use these abilities. They are, they are gifts, you know, and Allah, I believe, and I know that he's given to us, given these to us for a reason and a purpose. And, um, you know, brother, when you were talking about the, um, the Qigong and the, um, yoga and things like that I, I thank you for bringing that back to my attention especially right before ramadan because i was doing it um a while ago i don't know if you all remember but i was really doing my qigong and really being focused and then i started having some real serious back pains and then the back pain went into hip pain and it was at a point i couldn't even sit in this chair you know i mean it was like I, no matter what i did it was it was horrible experience you know, but by Allah's grace and mercy, we started doing physical therapy and a few other things to help relieve myself of that pain. And I'm no longer in that pain. So now that I'm out of the pain, you know, I can get back focused to the the Qigong. And Brother Tyreek did um, share with me a video to, you know, give me a, um, a routine, you know. But I would like to talk with you also um, about it. You know, if that is something that you do and you are proficient and what it is that you do, we may be able to share some things with our community so that they can benefit from it um, as well. Because, you know, we all know if your body is not tuned up, 
you know, then you're not going to be really thinking on even higher level of spirituality, um, you know, in business and things like that. And so, you know, I think I'm cool. I'm doing all right. I'm handling this business, handling that business. But, you know, I can only imagine how much um, greater that Allah will make me when my body is really tuned up, you know, with him, you know, and in the optimum state that Allah has designed the body to be in. So I thank you for bringing that up, brother, because I'm definitely putting that on my agenda for Ramadan, part of my um, my schedule and my routine. And what I like about it, um, Qigong and yoga is, is it's not ex exhausting, right. you know, so you're not thirsty, you know, when you finish with it, you sweat, you know, but it, it to me, it wasn't vigorous like that. Um, you know, it, it was really just that moving that energy around you know, in the body and bringing that body um, into homostasis, which was really a beautiful experience. And uh, Brother Anthony said, the law is the greatest of us all. That's and right. that is absolutely right. That's right. And uh, Brother Gavin, what my wife said about the, um, the angel uh, and telepathy, mm -hmm. uh, what, what she was saying, uh, if what we had spoke about earlier was that she had a dream about uh, Mother Tarnetta. She had a dream about Mother Tarnetta and Mother Tarnetta came and released some um, doves for her and then she said that uh, she has a power that this world has not seen and she would be the first one with it. She wouldn't necessarily be the strongest at it, but she'll be the first one uh, with it. Um, and uh, there are several articles. I have to look them up. I, I see. Well, do about you remember that. which episode that um, we talked about? I know about. we talked we, about crystals if you go and back, telepathy. If you go back on a couple of the um, Love My Kidney show where Mother Tynetta, we have on there that Mother, Mother reading an article by Mother Tynetta. Um, I think each and every last one of those articles, you will find something in it. I think the last one we did was about two weeks ago, and he listed all of those articles. Yeah, I'm going to uh, do it again. Okay, well, he's so such an awesome human being. He's going to go and get them for you, brother, so that you will be able to have access to them. You know, this information is not to be kept. It is to be shared. So, you know, to go, and I might have been in the moment and forgot exactly about what you're um, speaking of. Um, oh, okay, good. There you go. Um, you know, but it is very real. It is very, very real. brothers and sisters. We all experienced it. I'm sure at some point in time, but did we believe it? Right. You know, I mean, some, I've seen some things and being in the field mm -hmm. that I'm in working with natural stones, um, I run across a lot of different people, you know, especially when we were out vending and doing events and people would just come and tell me stuff, yep. you know, things that they have experienced. And there's no way it could not be real because if it wasn't real, it wouldn't be so many people, you know, I mean, and I'm talking about across states, you know, if people in Macon said one thing and, and somebody in Belize told me something else, you know, so these things are very real and Ramadan gives us that opportunity family to dig deeper. You know, really, especially, you know, if this is something, you know, that you want to really develop within yourself, you know, you want to make that part of your prayers, part of your supplication to Allah, you know, as you're asking, you know, him to to feed you and to grow you. You know, these are um, areas that you can talk to Allah about, you know, so that we can help heal our community. We can help um, our community thrive. Mm -hmm. You know, not just survive. We want to sur thrive. We want to go past survival. You know, we've been in survival mode for a very long time. You know, so it's time for us to grow beyond that. You know, this is the hour that Allah has made for us. You know, Allah came so that we can have life more abundantly, right? So if we get our Ramadan and eating how to live, right? How, how to eat to live. You know, if we take these in the, the last week, we talked about that Navy bean, you know, make sure you incorporate that Navy bean in your diet this month, you know, making that part of it. We had these, oh, 
Navy wing hot, Navy being hot wings last night. My son was like, that's what I want. So, um, you know, we took the Navy wings. We, the day before we had Navy being hummus veggie sandwiches, right? So we made the, um, the hummus. And it was really easy putting it, the beans in the blender with some tahini butter and, you know, a few other things, hooked it up, spread it on that little pita bread and put all the veggies, you know, all the veggies that you like. And, and that was dinner, you know, so the more that we're able to incorporate those beans, diabetic, it's going to help bring your sugar into balance, right? Um, if you have high blood pressure or your estrogen is too high or too low or, you know, your testosterone is too low or too high. Any of these issues that's going on with the body, the Navy being is actually designed to help balance that. So, you know, you want to incorporate that. I know our time is up. I've absolutely enjoyed, oh my God, I've enjoyed today. You all have, um, you know, really connected with my spirit and I feel you all's energy. I really, really do. And I'm grateful to Allah that you all have tuned in with us. You know, I thank Allah for his energy and, you know, in his presence, I feel him, you know, right here with us, family. And I think the more that we do of good, the more that we connect with one another to strengthen one another, because no man is an island. You know, we can't do this by ourselves. You can't do it by yourself. You know, so if you, um, you know, need a brother in your life. You want to adopt a Muslim, <laughs> as my husband uh, always uh, say, adopt the FOI and get your newspaper. But, you know, let's just keep vibing, you know, on the spirit of Allah to continue to grow to and, and continue to be better human beings so that we can um, make our planet peaceful again, you know, because that's our goal. What did my brother say? Or is that... He said he got interrupted. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, brother, just just go back. Uh, over the show again uh, it'll be once we're done it'll be for you to listen to it in a few minutes okay. or you can go to the YouTube uh, Mind Spark Creations and uh, you'll be able to hear it in its entirety and God willing by the end of the day we'll also have it up on our podcast on uh, Anchor FM and then we're going to uh, shoot it out to phenomenal radio our dear brother Slate Stone, brother Juan Carlos, X. Juan X Carlos over there, X. and the crew. Uh, so they're going to replay it on Friday and Saturday on Phenomenal Radio uh, on the TuneIn app, Phenomenal Radio. Mm -hmm. So you got a couple of places that you can can find that. Look, um, in the chat is Mother Tynetta's article. Yes, I put all the articles that I could find. I don't mm -hmm. know if those are all of them. If you all know more, all of those are about what she talked about, crystals. And again, we're looking for the book, Crystal Links, the lease. So if you know anybody that has it, an extra copy, uh, we'll be willing to purchase it from them yes. um, so that we can have it and review it uh, as well. Okay. Um, again, just real quick. You know that my wife is healing from stage five kidney failure. If you all didn't know that, we wanted to make that known. And we are in the process of building the 501c3 uh, called Love My Give access to other uh, people that can't necessarily afford uh, different healing modalities, natural. you know, natural healing modalities that will uh, help them to seek out natural ways of healing uh, themselves. So with that, you know, if you would like to help us with that, uh, it is going to be a uh, $6,000 call to get everything and get it, uh, get it legally done and get everything set in place that needs to be done for us to get that 501 uh, C3 up and running. So any donation mm -hmm. that you all would like to give, uh, we did put the cash app in the chat. And if you don't like to do that, then we ask that you would go uh, that you would go to I buy something. 10% of what you buy goes back to love my kidneys. That's right. And for those of you all who are looking for the Pax Immune, uh, we do have that available for you. 
Uh, you can go to that Etsy store and you can actually purchase it right there and we will get it to you. Okay. We'll yes. get it to you. So if you're interested in the Pax Immune, please visit our Etsy store. If you would like to help us in this mission, we want to give access to uh, naturopathic doctors, which as you know, a lot of health insurance won't cover. Mm -hmm. I mean, just a, a wide of different services and healing modalities that your health insurance won't cover. We want to be that. That's right. why we're starting to love my kidneys center. So anything that you would like to donate, please, please do that. Uh, you know, and we are on the ball. Like I said, this is something that I, that is, we are very passionate about uh, because of course my wife is healing from this and we have been dealing with this for several years but all praise is due to Allah we're getting better and better and I know you may say well why are you saying we because if she's that she's dealing with it I'm dealing with it right. and then we are working to heal through it you know and I pray that I will be a better and better helper to her you know so mm -hmm. that we can report back to you in the very near future that we are done with dialysis yes. and on the oh, move la. that's my focus y'all better and greater yes. and we're going to continue to help uh those to get a better quality of life that's right. as well well family we have enjoyed you um immensely today and we pray that we shared something that inspired you and for those who are looking for something uh, if you're in the Arizona area, we want to do it big this Ramadan. Um, I want to order a whole case of uh, four-inch bean pies, and I want to give those out along with the food so that not only are you going to get something delicious, uh, they, as far as the food, they're going to get something, a sweet treat for them to eat. So we're going to order yeah. that from okay. the Supreme Bean Pie. If you don't know that we ship it worldwide, uh let me put it in the chat all right and that's where you can order yours as well okay. the supreme bean pie.com now if you all would like to be a part of this effort to go and feed the homeless uh here in arizona please let us know definitely going to do it during the month of Ramadan. We would love to have you. We'd love to have you to come out and be with us. We're going to give out free final calls. Of course, we're going to give out the food. We're going to give out the pies. And as my wife said, you know, we may even increase that to a hundred dollars where we can bless 20 people. Possibly we will, we'll see or give $5 to 20 people. And that'll be something, you know, if you want to help in this effort, uh, please let us know. You can hit us in the cash app uh, as well if you'd like to do that. We're not saying that we can't do it on our own, but of course, with help, we can do it even bigger yeah. and better. And if you'd like to help us with that, then please feel free. It's going to be exactly what. We say it's going to be used for. We will put it on social media. We will show it uh, as well so you can all see mm -hmm. everything that is being done so you know that we ain't trying to swindle nobody or get over on no. nobody. I think y'all know us by we now. Y'all should, but still, the Honorable Minister Louis Parkhan has had to continually prove himself for 65 years. You know. Every night. Uh, I got to prove <laughs> 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 if you the years we've been doing it, you know we gotta mm. continue to do it. Well, well, we love you guys. We love you. You know, we are we really enjoy our time with you. Thinking Thursday is really special. Yeah, you know, really special. Looking forward to seeing you all. all. We're gonna wrap at three o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Um, we're gonna be dealing with different stones to have in our environment during Ramadan yes. and some of the things that we can do for our space. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. So you, you want, you know, we got to include some stones in there. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Mm -hmm. Come on and be with us on the queen of rap. 
That's going to be at 3 p.m. our time. That is 5 p.m. Central time and 6 p.m. Eastern time. Yes. 6 p.m. Eastern time. And Sister Fatima, uh, I don't know if my wife let you know, but God willing, uh, we'll be we'll talk to we'll you. We'll be talking to you. Um, I'll send you a text in a few minutes. Send you a text in a few minutes about what's going on, so you can be ready. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, family. Remember this: to be the best because you, you are, are absolutely, absolutely the, the best. best. And and love one another. Love one another. Do something phenomenal. Do something phenomenal. Do something phenomenal this Ramadan. Something phenomenal. You know, feed a hundred people. Feed a thousand people. Feed two. Feed two your if neighbor. you haven't done it. I mean, your neighbor, you, know, you don't know what they're going through. You know, just be the blessing. Bake be the cookies. blessing. Bake some cookies. Do something like that. You know, we used to be able to go in and read the Quran to the elders, but that's not something that's going on right now because of COVID. But that doesn't mean that you may can't give out some holy Qurans and things of that nature. So that's that's something to think about, family. And, um, you know, you have to do that the way you see fit. But we did put the articles of Mother Tynette, if you want to know more about her and the crystals and what she said about that. Um, and if you all don't have a Holy Quran, please go to Final Call Store. All praise is due to Allah, Brother Charles Magnificent. Please go to the store, <laughs> uh, Final Call Store, and pick up your Holy Quran. Then you should have it for yourself. Pick you up a hardback copy, a leather copy. They even got the small blue pocket size. I love one. that one. I have to get another one. You know, okay. Really so, nice. we, yeah. So, if you want to get that, you know, go ahead to uh, Final Call store and pick that up. Get you a new prayer rug. Get you a new prayer rug. Get you a new Quran. Just start it off like it's fresh, you yeah. know, if you can. If not, use what you got. Oh, the weather is wonderful. We had like oh, yeah. uh, 90 degrees. Already, now. y'all. It's yeah, we just had the about beginning 90, of April. 83. Is it 83 today? 80. But it's getting warmer. Ramadan Kareem. Yes, yes. indeed. That's yeah. what we are talking about. Let's okay. get that energy moving Let's for Ramadan. Let's get that energy moving. Let this be. May Allah bless this to be the greatest Ramadan that each and every one of us has ever been a part of. We're going to do our part to help it be just that, yes. you know, uh, wish I could go back and get our old shows where we actually read the whole of the Holy Quran for the month, but who knows what we may do during the month of Ramadan. You never know what you You never do. know. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned, stay tuned, stay yes. tapped in, family. We love you. There's nothing you can nothing do about, you can it. about it. May Allah continue to bless each and every one of you. We are excited about Ramadan. All praises is due to Allah. So let us get busy and let us get in the spirit of Ramadan. Be the best because you're absolutely the best. Right. Continue loving your kidneys. That's right. Fit to let the spark, spark in, in your, your mind, mind. A, a new, new reality. reality. Assalamu alaikum. Peace and blessings. Have a wonderful.